Although the traffic in Helsinki is as hectic as any other modern city, once away from the capital, traffic is light, the roads uncrowded, and the pace fairly relaxed. At least three quarters of the roads in central Finland are unsealed, and even the main roads connecting small towns are made of compacted dirt lying on a bed of solid granite. During the Ice Age, most of Finland's topsoil was pushed south into Poland. As the Poles haven't yet got round to handing it back, Finland remains rather short of soil and subsoil. Without this, of course, the road builders were compelled to work without filling material for all the hollows and dips, and therefore had to follow the natural run of the ground, unintentionally creating the infamous yumps that the rally drivers now have to contend with. There is no magical ingredient that makes the Finns better rally drivers. They're used to driving over dirt roads every day of the week, winter or summer, whatever the conditions. That and an overriding desire, always to be a winner, makes the Finns formidable opponents, particularly on their home ground. The enthusiasm for rallying in Finland has to be seen to be really appreciated. With an estimated half a million people, out of a population of only five million, turning out to watch the Thousand Lakes Rally, it's probably the only country that can count rallying as its national sport. Uvaskula, a pleasant town in central Finland, with a population of almost 65,000, plays host every August to the World Championship Thousand Lakes Rally. Headquarters for the event is the Rantasipi Hotel, and it is here that scrutineering and documentation for the rally takes place before the five o'clock start on Friday afternoon. The visiting teams base themselves with their respective local dealers, who are all avid rally enthusiasts, and who realize the publicity potential the rally brings to the area. Andy Dawson of Team Datsun Europe provides some of the latest technology to the bonnet of Salonen's car. Okay, Try that. Yeah, it's not. Just get some air out. Anders Kulang, you're now lead driver for the new Mitsubishi team. When we last spoke, you were with Opel and Publimo. Can you tell us what happened to Publimo? Uh, I don't know really what's happened with Publimo. I was driving Opel and uh, Publimo was there for help us. And uh, in the middle of the year, that was something some... I don't know what's happened really. So I stopped and uh, beginning with a new Mitsubishi car. The what? first event was Greece for us. Yes, how did that go? Okay, we shall not talk so much about Greece. We have uh, punctures and so we must stop. And now it's the uh, second event, and um, 
I'm more happy with the car in the moment. I mean, that is second event for me with Mitsubishi, and uh, the car is more competitive today. Have you done a lot of testing with it? We have done a lot of tests, yes. And uh, I mean, we never know what's happened. And uh, here in Finland, it's so hard and so many good Finn drivers, Swedish drivers, and yes, a lot of good drivers and good cars. So it's, uh, I'm happy if we can be one of the ten. Do you think, have you done it here in, in Finland, the testing, or in Austria? In, in, uh, here in Finland, before the rally, yes. And it's going to be strong enough for all these jumps, is it? Yes, but I mean, uh, we have been here a lot of years, and uh, we know the jumps, and uh, at the same time it's very difficult to practice in. It's uh, only low to go 30, 50 and 80, mm. and uh, the rally speed can be 190 over some jumps. What about the other drivers in the team? Who else have you got? Uh, I think we are a quite good team. I think Bruno can explain it more than I. Bruno, yeah, the rest of the team. Well, I think the the best driver, if you can uh, take point out one of the Finnish drivers, will be Hamelin. He won the rally 77, and he's driving completely without pace notes. His co-driver arrived today. This, this is his first time in the event, and. Uh, He's, he's relying totally on memory. Yes, on memory, and that's fantastic. And he's a re re reliable driver. He will, he will not do a mistake, and he's very fast. And then, of course, Lina is also fast, but then he's using pace notes. So maybe that's the difference. <laughs> And who's going to win, Bruno? Uh, it's very difficult to say. Marco will uh, fight for a win, and Hanno also. But then we have three more Finns who are very quick. And uh, it's impossible to say. It will be a big fight, a big battle. On the opening four-kilometer stage, Marco Alain set second fastest time in his field, with Vatanen two seconds slower in the Rothmans escort. Mikula in the Audi Quattro demoralizes the opposition by recording a time five seconds quicker than Elaine and an incredible 15 seconds quicker than 10th fastest driver Pentia Ricola. By special stage three, Uria, Mikola has opened out a slender lead over Alain and Vatanen. This horrifying yump is the only one in the road book to be cautioned and has been likened to driving down a cliff face. And off here is usually terminal and most drivers treated with respect. Driving by boat to a special stage would be a novelty anywhere else, but not in Finland. With the heavy rain making conditions treacherous, Mikola is using the four-wheel drive quattro to good effect, and by stage five has extended his lead slightly.
Despite his spin, however, a determined Marco Elaine still equals Mikola's time on the 24-kilometer stage. There is a hard night ahead of the competitors with another 15 stages to complete before a welcome rest halt back at Yavaskala. Special stage 20, Rui Mackey, the last stage before Yavaskala. Mikula is still in the lead, although has had to contend with a worsening misfire. Vatanen has moved into second place after Elaine lost time during the night with a roll on stage 10. flat out in fifth gear at an average of over 130 kilometers an hour. Toivonen's co-driver Fred Gallagher said he thought it best to wear his crash helmet back to front. He didn't really want to see how fast he was going. After the rest halt, the weather miraculously cleared, and it was to remain warm and dry for the rest of the event. The opening stage of the second leg was a mixed tarmac loose surface test in the middle of Uvascula itself, guaranteed to entertain the huge crowds and bring the Saturday shopping to a halt. Only second separated the top groups, and indeed Mikula, Battenen, Alain, Toivonen and Eklund all shared second fastest time, being surprisingly beaten by one second by Anders Kulan in the Turbo Lancer.
was still having problems with his turbo. The misfire that had plagued him on the last few stages of the first leg had worsened. Audi mechanics decided a camshaft change was necessary, and it was a worried Mikula who watched the minutes tick away, and with them his lead, as he incurred road penalties and dropped to fifth. Vatanen was the new rally leader. Vatanen and Elaine were swapping seconds at the head of the field and having an intense personal battle. The other leading contenders were fighting just to stay in touch, although the gap was already widening with only Mikula making ground with some determined driving to improve on his fifth place. had a serious problem when a bypass pipe on the turbocharger of his Lancer broke, causing drastic overheating, which cooked his oil. The subsequent repair meant road penalties, which dropped him well down the field. Towards the end of the rally, teammate Hamalainen was to suffer a similar problem. And Mick, running late due to his camshaft problem, was putting up some impressive times in his fight back and took seven seconds off Vatanen on this day. they really are flying fins over a flat out crest on stage 31, competitors head back towards Uvascula and another short rest halt.
crowd control in Finland is very strict, with the marshals having considerable influence over who stands where, due to the sobering effect of their canine friends. <laughs> stage 32, Rui Mackey, again the last stage before the Uvascular Rest Halt. Vatanen is still going strong and maintaining his lead over Elaine, with Toivonen putting in a late challenge. Mikula has passed Salonen and is up to fourth. The final morning of the 1981 Thousand Lakes Rally, and only four stages still to go. Vatanen and Elaine had continued their tremendous pace, each crew driving at 11 tenths with no margin for error. Dave Richards, Vatanen's co-driver, confirmed they were two seconds a mile quicker in the wet this year than they had been over the same stages in 1980. On one stage, they had been an incredible 22 seconds quicker. Retirements during the night included Per Eklund on stage 36 with engine problems in his Porsche 911 and Henry Toivonen on stage 38 with a distributor fault on his sunbeam. A disappointing end after such a spirited drive. The infamous Uriya Yump again, two stages from the finish, and no one is taking any chances. Mikula has moved into third place after Toivonen's retirement, and barring Vatanen or Alain having a problem, knows he cannot improve on that position.
The rally is drawing to its conclusion, an event that will long be remembered for the titanic struggle between Vatanen and Elaine, of Mikola's fight back in the Quattro, of Salonen's splendid effort in bringing his Group 2 Datsun Violet into fourth place, and of the reliability of the Colt Turbo Lancers in finishing 10th, 11th and 12th on only their second major rally. The Thousand Lakes Rally is a unique event. It is incredibly fast, using roads which are like nothing to be found anywhere else in the world. The organisation is excellent, with officials, marshals, hoteliers and general public making foreign crews and visitors welcome to Finland. To compete on the rally is an adventure, to finish an achievement, but to win puts you among...